Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is my last video. It has been a pleasure making these videos for you. I hope you, that you find them helpful. Uh, we are to the binomial theorem. Um, this is a big deal. And um, it, even though it's down here, we need a skill before we get there. And that is finding something called a combination. Um, so we would say this is n combination k. Here's another way that we write this in higher math. Um, you'll hear me say, n choose k. Uh, that, that means the same thing. It's basically n factorial over n minus k factorial uh, times k factorial. And uh, this has lots of uses outside of the binomial theorem. Uh, this is used in um, probability and, um, and, and in other fields, actually. This comes up quite often. Um, and I want to show us how to do this. Um, I want to know how to do it by hand, but at the same time, I want to show you how to use uh, your technology. So let's start with part A. Three choose two. You know, it kind of looks like a fraction, but it's not. Um, and this is going to, and in this case is three. So this is three factorial over three minus two factorial. Uh, and if you remember, we made it run into this zero factorial, we define as one. And then k factorial, that's two. So we're going to have three factorial, one factorial times two factorial. Three factorial is three times two times one. One factorial is one. Two factorial is two times one. And you can see very nicely, we end up with three. Now your calculator is able to do this. I'd like to show you how to do it with my calculus. Actually, I have two calculators. I'm going to show you how to do this one. So for this next one, this is four choose two, or four combination two. So I'm going to type four. And to get it out of this calculator, I have to hit math, go over to probability, and there it is. And they use R instead of K, this means the same thing. So four choose two is six. So four choose two is six. Now let's go ahead and do that four factorial over four minus two factorial times two factorial. That's two factorial times two factorial. So that's four times three times two times one over two factorial, two factorial. You can see those reduce. We end up with two times three over one, which is six. So I'm going to be using a calculator from now on. Um, I do want to show you on another calculator. This particular calculator, if you look above the number eight, you can see the n choose r. So I would go four, oh, let's turn on. four, second, and that button, and then two, and there's our six. So most calculators, uh, scientific calculators will have it. Uh, part C, eight choose zero. So I'm going to go eight. Choose zero. It's going to give me one. And 20 choose 14. Let's see what we get. Choose 14. It's a big number. 38,760. So it's not hard to do. It's just, uh, we just need to know how to do it. And with that skill, we now have the binomial theorem, which is really cool. Bi meaning two numbers, x and y in this case, raised to a power. And when we do that, we end up with the summation. Now, notice k is going to start from 0 to n. That means that there's actually k plus 1. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, n plus 1 total terms. So when we add up all of these terms here, uh, there's going to be a total of n, n plus 1 of them. And it's going to be n choose k, starting k at 0, up to n, n minus k for the exponent on the first part. And we got to be careful when we hit there. And then kth power on the y. And we end up with exactly this here. And the easiest way to do this is to just 
crank it out. So let's begin part A. So for part A, N is six. So X plus Y to the sixth power is going to give us, based on the theorem up here, let's leave the theorem up here, uh, 620 x to the six minus zero power and y to the zero power. So six, choose one, x to the six minus one, y to the one, plus six, choose two, x to the six minus two, y to the second, plus six, choose three, x to the six minus three, y to the third, plus six, choose four, x to the six minus four power, y to the fourth power, plus six choose five, x to the six minus fifth power, y to the fifth, plus six choose six, x to the six minus six power, y to the sixth power. And let's crank this out. So this is going to equal, Six choose zero, six choose zero is one. So one, x to the six, now why the zero is just gonna be one. So this is literally x to the sixth power. Six choose one, six choose one, six, six, now that's gonna be x to the fifth, y plus six choose two, six choose two, 15. That's gonna be x to the fourth, y to the second, plus six choose three, 20. X to the third, y to the third, plus six choose four, Fifteen, and that's going to be x to the second, y to the fourth, plus six choose five. Six x to the first, y to the fifth, plus six choose six is one. Yeah. That's x to the zero, so that's one as well. So this is just y to the sixth. Now. I want to notice some patterns here. Some pretty cool patterns, actually. Notice the coefficient is 1, then 6, then 15, and the middle is 20. That is a pattern that does come up with these quite a bit, um, where they, they start at 1, go up, and then come back down. Let's try part B here. Now, relative to our formula, x in this case is now 3x, and y in this case is a negative 2y. So just kind of keeping that in mind. n in this case is 4. So uh, 3x minus 2y to the fourth is going to be 4 choose 0. 3x to the 4 minus 0 power negative two y to the zero power plus four choose one, three x to the four minus one power, negative two y to the first power plus four choose two, three x to the four minus two power, negative two y to the second power plus four choose three, 3x to the 4 minus 3 power, negative 2y to the third power, plus 4 choose 4, 3x to the 4 minus 4 power, negative 2y to the fourth power. So let's wrestle all of this out. Let's choose 4, 4 choose 0 is 1. Now that goes to one as well. 
Now this is three X to the fourth power. Three to the fourth power is 81. And that again goes to one. Four choose one is four. So that's gonna be four, that's four. That's three to the third power. That's negative two times y. We'll clear all that up here in just a second. Next up, we're here. Four choose two, six. So this becomes six, three to the second power, x squared, negative two squared, y squared plus, or choose three, four, four, times that's now three x to the first power. That's now negative two to the third power, y to the third power, plus four, choose four. Choose one. That is now, 3x to the zero power, that's also one. This is now plus negative two to the fourth power, y to the fourth power. So let's clean this up. 81x to the fourth. Here I have three to the third is 27 times four times negative two. That's minus 216x to the third, y to the first. Next up, I have six times nine times, now that's gonna be a positive four times four. Negative two squared is positive four. There's my coefficient, again, 216. That's x squared, y squared. Next up, I am here. So that's, four times three, which is 12 times. Now that's a negative two to the third is negative eight. Minus 96 X Y to the third. So that's just X to the first and then Y to the third. And then here, negative two to the fourth, now watch, negative two close raised to the fourth is a positive 16. Y to the fourth. So there it is all cleaned up. Now this may look like a lot of extra work, but doing this by hand, meaning three X minus two uh, Y times three X minus two Y, foil that together, multiply it by another three X, foil that together, then do it again four times or up here even worse, six times. This formula is way faster. And the nice thing about this formula is it's programmable, meaning we could actually, uh, write a computer program that could come up with all the coefficients for us. All right, so here we go. So this would be A, this would be B, this is part A. Uh, find the coefficient of x to the second, y to the sixth, and we're dealing with this here. Well, what that means is, in this case, n is eight, and k is six. So this is gonna be n choose k, which is eight choose six. This is gonna be seven x to the eight minus six power and negative three y to the sixth power. So we need a lot of numbers here. So let's crank this out. So let's start with eight choose six, 28. Let's write that down, so that's 28. This is going to be seven squared. You can see that's the second power. So seven squared is 49. And then we have negative three to the sixth power. I have no idea what that is. So negative three, sixth power. So positive 729. 
And that is now x to the second power, y to the sixth power. So let's multiply all that out. 729 times 49 times 28. Ooh, that's a big number. 100188x squared y to the sixth. So our coefficient of interest is 1,188,000. This next one is even uglier because we have to be careful. That's y squared raised to the seventh. So that n in that case, n is seven, that's fine. However, k is y squared raised to the sixth, uh, the overall sixth power. So y squared raised to the third, there's my k. My three there. So this is going to be, this is K. So this is going to be seven choose three, even though it kind of looks like it should be six. It's not because that Y squared there. Then we get X, uh, which is just X in this case, X to the seven minus three power, and then the four y squared raised to the third power. So just be really careful there. So let's do seven choose three, 35, and four to the third power. Let's get that four to the third power, 64. And that's gonna give us x to the fourth y to the sixth, which is what we're looking for. So I just need 35 times 64. So 64 times 35, there we go. 2,240, x to the fourth, y to the sixth. Finally, a theorem. It's been a pleasure, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>